In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. Dr. Vera Reritz Zagrosek, thank you very much for joining us. Hello, welcome. Dr. Zagrosek, please summarize for us in how far do the symptoms of a heart attack in a man and a woman differ? Well, both can experience very heavy chest pain and pain going to the left arm. However, women also frequently have uh, infarctions just with nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and they don't recognize it as myocardial infarctions. This can also happen in men, particularly in diabetics, but it's more frequent in women. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is difficult to diagnose. What would you say, what needs to be done for a foolproof diagnosis? We've just seen that the electrocardiogram isn't enough. You certainly want to have uh, laboratory values um, in addition, and then you want a stress test, very important. And in women, imaging during stress tests is particularly important. There are several techniques that your doctor would know, either echocardiography or others. Mm -hmm. So make sure maybe you ask your doctor about these different tests when you suspect a heart attack, right? Yes, this is very important. Mm -hmm. What other diseases are there where there's a gender difference in men and women? Almost all diseases, if you look for it, you will find it. It's particularly well known in immunological diseases, in inflammatory diseases. Most rheumatic diseases are diseases of women. It also occurs in neuropsychiatric diseases. Mm -hmm. Like, for example? Like depression, very important. Also, schizophrenia or multiple sclerosis, quite frequently. And for men, I believe osteoporosis is an example where they sometimes misdiagnose. Is that correct? Osteoporosis, certainly. This is uh, heavily underdiagnosed in men. And this. Um, is partially due to the fact that female-specific normal values have been used also to diagnose bone density in men. So um, both sexes or genders really benefit if you have sex-specific normal values and a sex or gender-specific understanding of disease. Mm -hmm. So the little difference needs to be taken into account. What? Um what, different, what diseases require different therapies, especially when it comes to medication? Well, heart failure, for example, uh, requires that you very carefully diagnose, uh, dose some drugs in women. Also, some antiarrhythmic drugs may need different dosing, dosing in women and men. Inflammatory bowel disease is a disease where a drug is only um, accepted for women and has been developed only for women. That's the only example of such a drug. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a few. Also in the neuropsychiatric diseases, in depression, you have some drugs that are better for men, others that are better for women. So how do you deal with that if your doctor prescribes you some medication and you're not sure um, if, it, if it's good for you as a woman or as a man, what should you do? Well, actually, you should ask your doctor whether this drug has been tested in women or whether with a diagnostic procedure there are normal values for women available and if it has been tested in women. I think a modern doctor should say yes and should explain to you what the difference in women and men are. If a doctor refuses a discussion on such a question, um, you might be aware. Mm -hmm. You might be, have to be careful. We've had a viewer writing to us, Mikhail Sukovatis from Russia, and he would like to know how much the pharma industry takes these anatomical differences into account. I think the pharmaceutical industry that is now on the way towards individualized medicine um, has to realize that there are women and men and different age groups, also different ethnic groups. So they are more and more progressing towards these attitudes. They actually um, are a little bit worried that it might increase costs just right now, almost all drugs are developed in young male mice. 
We have to consider also female mice, but the end of the pipeline, this will reduce cost by reducing the number of adverse drug effects. Mm -hmm. And both sexes will benefit from more uh, subtle diagnosis and medication. Yes. Thank you very much for being our guest today. Thanks for your time. Thank you.